Today in the workshop I will be making this taper turning attachment for the lathe, also known as a set over centre. I'll talk a little bit about turning tapers in the lathe and the problem that this tool addresses and then I'll take you through the full build process and show you how to use it. There are a number of ways to cut tapers in the lathe but when cutting long tapers the workpiece is generally held between centres and then the tailstock offset towards the operator. This presents the workpiece to the cutting tool at an angle therefore resulting in the tapered part. The way that we do this is via this little grub screw here and a corresponding one on the other side. There's a grub screw in the centre there to keep everything locked in place and a scale at the side here to determine the amount of offset that you want. Now this is all fine and dandy up until the point that we want to set the tailstock back to the centre to keep the lathe running true. If we set the tailstock back to centre using this gauge then it's very unlikely that the lathe will turn parallel with any precision. So it's a case of breaking out the between centres test bar and the dial test indicator. Now, I'm not going to talk about this process here now. I will talk about it in a later video if people are interested. But uh, needless to say, it takes a long time and it's quite a faff. So this is why I've made this tool. Now, how it essentially works is that we insert the tool into the tailstock via the Morse taper arbor. And it's got two slides on it, one of which has a centre mounted in the middle. This centre can be then adjusted back and forth uh, via the thumb screws and the scale on the top, which means that we don't have to keep readjusting the tailstock once we've got it dialed in. I'll be building this today from a Hemingway kit, and as usual, we get a nice set of plans plus some build notes and all the bar stock and hardware that we need to complete the build. The first job will be to make the main body of the tool that sits between the slide that holds the half center and the arbor that holds the tool into the tailstock. I'm using the one inch by three eighths bar stock that came with the kit and the uh, first job is to face off either end and uh, bring it to length. I need to locate the center of the workpiece here so I can drill and tap for M8. M8 is the um, thread size that we're going to use to attach the MT3 arbor to the back of the uh, main body of the tool. I'm going to start the tap off in the mill just to keep it uh, nice and square and then finish it off by hand. The next features that I'm going to machine into the main body of the tool here are the two slots, one either side of the main central hole um, that will accommodate the M6 bolts that uh, bolt through the body of the tool into the slide and hold it in place during, uh, during use. Now the build notes that came with the kit uh, specify that you should pre-drill the ends of each slot with a 6mm drill. Um, I did this, but unfortunately the, uh, they came out a bit oversized, which was uh, somewhat annoying. So um, I think if I were doing this over again, I would just slot mill the whole feature rather than uh, pre-drilling it. For the next operation, I want to mill a slot to a fairly accurate depth. So what I'm doing here is lowering the uh, quill until the slot drill touches the work. And then I'm resetting the, um, the quill dero so that I've, I've got an exact zero on that surface and I know... Uh, with some degree of accuracy how deep I'm going to actually mill that slot. The slots that I'm drilling here are the countersink for the uh, head of the bolt essentially. So uh, M6 bolt um, is about 10 millimeters in diameter and about 6 millimeters deep. So that's how big I'm making the slots. This seemed to go quite well just stepping down about half a millimeter at a time. And then I'm just going to repeat exactly the same feature on the other side of the part. And before moving on with the next operation, I'm going to do some chamfering. I've just flipped the, uh, the part over on its end in the vise and uh, I'm using the edge finder here to um, accurately locate the centre of the workpiece so that I can drill and tap M5 for the adjusting screw. Now there's one of these screws on each side of the tool body. And the way that this is used is that the, um, you screw one screw out and you screw the other one in and it pushes, uh, pushes on the head of the M6 bolt which holds the slide on, therefore moving the, uh, the centre across. The next thing I'm going to do here is to mill away two recesses, one on each side of the part. Um, these are a sixteenth of an inch deep um, and they act as runners for the, uh, for the sliding mechanism. So that's this part almost done. Um, I am going to need to clean up those edges with a file and uh, I've still got the mill scale finish on the on the original bar stock on some of the part there so I will probably clean that up with some sandpaper. I'm moving on to the uh, slide component now and again this is made out of uh, inch by 3 eighths cold rolled. 
I need to bring this to a reasonably precise length. So what I've done is I've finished both ends, I've edge found one end, and I'm now taking a measurement with the caliper. I can then punch this number into the DRO, and it's then simply a question of milling down to the uh, number that you require, which in this case is two and three eighths, and you end up with a really accurately dimensioned part. The next job is to mill the uh, the slide way in the back of the uh, in the back of the slide. Uh, this is going to be 19 30 seconds wide, which is about 15 millimeters and uh, about 16th of an inch deep. So I want to do a test fit now, but before I do that, I need to deburr those edges, um, and I'm going to do that with a ruby stone. Um, it's a little bit too small to get in there with a needle file. Um, so I think a ruby stone is the best bet. Uh, you know, I don't want any, any burrs interfering with the fit. And it's close. I mean, too close. So, um, yeah, as you can see, one end is just about going in, but the, the other end isn't, and it certainly isn't going to be sliding. So I need to take some more material off here. I opted to take off one one hundredth of a millimetre on each side here. So that's uh, about four tenths or just under half a thou on each side. Um, it was pretty close, so uh, I didn't want to overcook it. I am looking for a tight sliding fit on this uh, on this, on this this part, so um, I figured that would be a good place to start. And that has worked out quite well. Um, it's, it is a tight fit, but it's, it is a sliding fit, and uh, there's absolutely zero wiggle, which I'm really pleased with. I'm now going to drill and tap this M8 for the uh, half centre, which will screw in from the other side of the part. Uh, if you're working in Imperial, you can use a 5 16 uh, BSF thread on this, according to the plans, or um, anything else that's equivalent. It's up to you because we cut the, um, the thread on the half centre ourselves anyway. So, um, yeah, whatever you think is appropriate. I also need to drill and tap two M6 holes here to receive the uh, cap head bolts that, um, that, that come through from the uh, main body of the tool and uh, help retain the uh, slide in place. There's still a couple of operations to go on this part, but um, before I do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it out of the vise and uh, do some uh, deburring and uh, some cleanup. Um, these these mill scale um, surfaces that we that we've got here, I, I will try and clean up with sandpaper. I mean, it would be nice if um, we had enough stock allowance to to machine that, but I mean the uh, the bar stock itself comes in at you know a nominal size, so um, with the with the stock that you get in the kit anyway, at least um, that's not. That's not feasible really, if you want to stay on dimension. Back over to the vise now, and I'm going to drill and tap a, an M5 hole in the middle here. Now this, this hole terminates in the M8 hole that we've already put in for the half center. And what it allows us to do is to screw in a grub screw that will clamp down on the threads of the half center and stop it coming loose uh, in use. Now that we've got most of the machining done, I've, I'm just doing another quick test fit. And again, um, there's no wiggle, which I'm really pleased with, and it seems to slide back and forward uh, reasonably easily. Uh, it's, it's quite tight, but it, um, it's, this is going to work well, I think, because there's, there's just zero play in the mechanism. And um, you can see there that the, uh, the machine surfaces seem to fit together quite well. I'm going to move on now to making the uh, adjusting screws. Uh, we need two of these, and uh, the kit comes with some 5 8 uh, steel bar stock for the for the purpose. But I figured it uh, might look nicer with uh, with brass, and I'm going to make mine slightly bigger, three quarters of an inch. I'm going to machine these down uh, to the correct diameter for uh, M5, and uh, I'm making them 7 8 of an inch long the shafts, uh, which is about 22 millimeters. I'm shooting for an OD of 5mm here so we can come in with the M5 die and cut the thread. I'm going to round off the end of the screw here with a lathe file just before we, uh, before we tap it so that we've got a nicer action in use. It should engage the, the, the head of the bolt in the, uh, in the tool itself a bit better with a rounded end. I'm using my uh, shop made uh, die holder here to come in with an M5 die and, uh, and thread that, um, that screw thread. So the final operation on this part is to, um, is to part it off and chamfer it. 
Now the uh, the drawings call for a three sixteenths uh, head on this, which is about five millimeters, but I don't think it's critical. So whatever you think looks good. I'll make a second one of these off camera and I will need to uh, remove that nubbin from the parting operation and uh, clean up the uh, face of it with some sandpaper. The kit came with, um, in my case, an MT3 arbor. Uh, you can also get it with MT2 arbors. And um, these arbors have uh, a soft end, a machinable end. So we need to turn that down to the correct um, diameter for M8 so to allow us to um, screw the arbor into the uh, tool body. Now this thread does need to be quite a tight fit, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to screw cut it rather than uh, than using a die, um, just because I want to be able to control the um, the fit. As I said earlier, the uh, kit does come with the stock at nominal size, so I'm just going to try and improve the surface finish a little with some sandpaper here. I mean, it would be nice to have a little bit of extra stock to be able to machine it, but um, it is what it is. Next up, I'm going to put a line through the center here uh, to, to allow us to accurately align the parts and also a scale to allow us to set the offset. Now, it's really important that these parts are correctly aligned when we're doing this. So I've put an M8 bolt through the center of both parts and also clamped together with the two M6 bolts to uh, make sure everything's secure. So I've set everything up in the, uh, in the milling machine. And um, what I'm using here is uh, a drag engraver bit from my pantograph machine. Um, what it is, is it's an industrial diamond set into a three millimeter shaft. Now I'm holding that shaft in an ER11 uh, collet here, and I've got it set up in the quill of the machine, and uh, I'm simply dragging the, uh, the, the diamond across the surface of the, uh, the workpiece in order to engrave it. Now this line here is the, uh, is the central line. It's known as the fiduciary line, and um, what it allows us to do is to exactly align both the slide and the main body of the tool when we want to reset it back to uh, zero. And now that we've got that central reference marked, I'm going to go down the main body of the tool and um, using the DRO, I'm moving over uh, one millimeter at a time there and marking off um, the degrees of the scale. Uh, I'm using slightly longer uh, lines for the uh, five millimeter increments and longer again for the 10 millimeter increments. Obviously I'm using a metric scale here, but there's nothing to stop you using an imperial scale. Uh, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I, I tend to work in metric, so I'm, I'm going to use a metric scale on this, but there's, there's no reason why you couldn't use an imperial one. I'm just going to use a sharpie here to uh, make those lines stand out a little bit better. And then I'm going to um, just finish that edge on some sandpaper there to uh, remove the burrs from the engraving and to clean off the, any excess uh, pen. I was quite happy with the way that the scale came out. There is a bit of surface pitting from the uh, mill scale, but that'll have to do for now. The next thing we need to do is to uh, machine the ends of both parts together. And the way we're going to do this is to clamp them together and to fix them to the MT3 arbor in the, uh, in the lathe. We need to fix the uh, tool body to the MT3 arbor screw thread that we cut earlier with Loctite 648 for a permanent connection so that it doesn't come loose during use. And I figured that I'd do this right now rather than wait until later so that um, as we're turning it in the lathe, it, um, it you know it doesn't, doesn't fly off and hit me in the face. But as you will see in a minute, this turns out to be a mistake. So the general idea here is to radius both ends of both parts. The parts are clamped together and I've slid the slide up to one end so that we can machine um, both ends on, on, on one end first and then the idea is that we then unclamp the slide and move it to the far end and machine the other end. So that's the machining finished for both parts on one end and if we flip that over now you'll see that um, we need to move the slide up to meet the uh, machined end of the uh, base there so that we can finish that off. And it was at this point that I discovered my mistake. So as you can see there's no clearance to get the, uh, get the Allen key in there to um, loosen that bolt and there's no way to move that slide. So what I'm going to have to do is to machine away uh, part of this arbor while the um, while the tool body is actually fixed to the uh, arbor itself because there's no way that that's coming undone now. Now there's no easy way to hold this so the best way I could think of was to put it into the four jaw chuck 
and to dial it in. I'm using some copper plate there just so that the tool doesn't get damaged and um, I'm dialing it in with a dial test indicator here to try and get the part running as true as possible. I'm quite annoyed at myself for not uh, thinking of this earlier. I should have checked this uh, way before I glued it on. Um, but nevertheless, um, I think it's going to work out just fine. Um, this arbor's uh, machining quite nicely. Uh, I just need to be a bit careful with the um, to not hit the um, the tall body there. And I think actually what I'll do is I'll I'll just take a little facing cut across the back of the tall body, um, just to try and sort of blend it in with the with that arbor. It really needs a little bit more taking off just here, but the, um, I'm limited on the uh, on the depth of cut here because of the bolt head, you see, so uh, I don't want to take too much off. Now, I'm not too happy with the uh, surface finish on the back here, but it's on the back side of the tool and I don't think it's really going to matter. Um, what's important, though, is that I now have the clearance that I need to get into those bolt heads. And I can now release the slide and move it over to continue the machining. So all I need to do now is clean up the uh, final end of that slide so that it uh, matches the radius on the, uh, on the base of the tool. That's pretty much finished now. Um, there is a little bit of a lip, so I'll give it one more pass before cleaning everything up with, um, with a file. Now to machining the half center, and we're doing this out of drill rod, or uh, silver steel as us Brits like to call it. Uh, which is is a, is a hardenable tool steel, so quite quite a good uh, choice for this application. Now the first job is to um, turn an M8 uh, screw thread on the end of it, so that we can screw it into the base of the tool. Uh, for those using Imperial out there, um, you can use a 5 uh, thread for this, uh, whatever you used in the in the base of the tool. I'm going to be single point threading this uh, to ensure a good fit, and uh, I'm just setting up my um, my threading tool there. Using the uh, center height gauge, uh, this is another shot made tool from uh, Hemingway Kits, which uh, was a quite an interesting build. I can talk more about that if um, if people are interested. I've set the uh, lathe change gears to uh, 1.25 thread pitch, which is the correct thread pitch for an M8. And uh, yeah, just doing an initial scratch pass on there just to make sure that um, everything's as it should be. And I'll come in now with the um, with the thread gauge and just check that all looks good. So it's just a question now of continuing with light passes until I hit my numbers. Doing a test fit here with the slide and uh, I've ended up exactly what I wanted, which is a nice tight fit on that screw thread. Now we need to put in um, a cross hole in the center to uh, allow us to um, insert a, a bar to tighten it and uh, I want to make sure that this this cross hole is aligned with the um, with the plate here so I'm, I'm lining it up in this uh, in this collet block with uh, with the use of the slide to make sure it's in the correct orientation before drilling the plans call for this to be a 330 second hole but uh, I don't have a 330 second drill so I'm using two and a half millimeters which is ever slightly larger but it will still work fine back over to the lathe now and I've flipped the part around and I'm bringing it to length before um, moving the compound slide around to 30 degrees to cut the 60 degree taper. This is actually a good example of uh, another method for cutting tapers in the lathe. Now um, we are limited on the length of the taper by the travel of our compound slide because we're moving the, um, the compound slide uh, in and out there to actually make the cut. The last machining operation I've got to do on this part is to machine away half of the uh, center to make it into a half center. And uh, what this allows us to do in use is to get the cutting tool in closer to the center of the work for facing operations, etc. Now, being a small round part, this is quite a difficult um, part to hold for, for milling. So um, I've employed the use of my finger plate clamping tool. Uh, I've just removed the uh, drill guide and bushing from it and I've flipped it up on its side and uh, mounted it in the vise. Um, if you're interested in seeing this tool being made, uh, I did this in a previous video and I'll leave a link in the description below. I was a bit worried about this not being the um, most secure of setups, so um, I'm using just a small end mill and I'm only taking light cuts and it seems to have worked out just fine actually.
So now it's time for a test fit and um, I went to a lot of trouble to make sure that that cutout section on the centre was uh, correctly aligned with the tool. Now it was only at this point that I realised that I'd, I'd aligned it perfectly but 90 degrees out of phase so yeah more for me. Um, so I need to machine a bit off the back of that um, off the back of that centre to make sure that it, it tightens up in the correct orientation and I'm just going to use a set of feeler gauges to work out that gap so I know how much to take off. I worked out from that feeler gauge that I uh, need to remove 0.3 of a millimetre from the back face of the uh, of the centre in order to get it into the right orientation and that does seem to have done the trick. If this centre is going to last I need to harden it so um, what I've done is I've machined up a, um, a simple mandrel out of mild steel that I can screw the, uh, the centre into in order to hold it for hardening and put later polishing. The last time I hardened a part, uh, it oxidised quite badly and uh, it was quite difficult to clean up. So this time round, I'm going to try a little bit of borex flux on the on the part to see if um, see if that helps with the oxidation. So I'm using an oxyacetylene torch here to heat the part and uh, what I'm doing at the moment is just melting that, that flux. Uh, it goes kind of glassy and uh, you know once it starts to melt you know that the, the, the part is starting to come up to temperature. Now we are shooting for a cherry red here. It looks a lot brighter and a lot hotter on camera I think but um, yeah at the time it looked cherry red to me and uh, yeah, about this point uh, I decided it was uh, time for a quench. So to test if we've been successful, uh, I'm going to use the trusty old file technique where um, yeah, you can see that the, uh, the file is skating over the top of the part there without digging in. Now you compare that to the soft steel of the mandrel and uh, there's a world of difference. So I think we've had a good result here. Now it's come out looking pretty dirty, uh, a lot of this is borax flux residue so I'm going to submerse the part in boiling water to, to uh, dissolve a lot of that away. But afterwards it was still um, pretty dirty so I put it back on the mandrel in the lathe and uh, I'm just giving it a light polish with some 400 grit wet and dry. And now it's time for final assembly. Now to get any accuracy out of this tool we are going to need to do some trigonometry but don't panic the calculations are really simple and I'll talk you through it right now. Uh, full instructions are included with the build notes that come with the kit. In order to work out S which is our tool offset in this formula we need to take the tangent of half the desired included angle and then times that by the length of the part between centres. My taper I want to make 3.5 degrees included angle so half of that is 1.75 so we take the tangent of that and then times that by 257 which is the length between centres of my part and that gives us a result of 7.85 millimetres that we need to offset the tool. And now we need to set up to make our cut. So now we're all set up to make the cut. We've got the workpiece between centers. We've got the, uh, the set over center tool in the uh, tailstock and set to the correct distance. And um, we're, we've also got a drive dog clamped to one end of the workpiece to drive it. One drawback that I found with the, uh, the, the, the set over center tool is that it extends out quite a long way. It takes quite a lot of um, space up. And this does tend to interfere with the tool post a little bit. So um, what I've had to do to compensate for that is to extend the, um, the, uh, the turning tool out quite some way. Um, quite a lot further than I would normally be comfortable with. But it um, seems to be working fine for now. So I'm really pleased with the uh, results that I'm getting with this tool. Um, I've made quite a few tapers now. And um, yeah, it seems to be performing just as I expected it to. So that was another really fun little project. And if you want to buy one of these kits, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get one. Um, I've got a number of uh, other tool making videos coming up and I should be using this tool in one of those. So if you're uh, interested in seeing that, please hit that subscribe button and, uh, and the bell icon so you don't miss out. And I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.